Swami addressed teachers from the Anantapur campus on 25th January 2004. The members of the faculty from the Anantapur campus, they had a training for three days there and uh, Bhagawan graciously permitted them to have their valedictory function here in Prashantanaya. And they all came here. Suddenly I got an intimation that I was to make my appearance <laughs> for my professional duty as a translator. Most important points are these, what he informed teachers. Because that would certainly be useful to all the general devotees, those in teaching profession in particular, I would like to share them with you. The first thing he said was, a teacher should love his profession. A teacher should love his students. With that he would be able to discharge things expected of him to the best of his ability. Unless there is love, he cannot please anybody and his teaching will be also useless. Goods are better delivered with the spirit of love. That's what Bhagwan said, point one. Point two, what Swami said was that we teachers have got to teach our students the spirit of oneness, that all are one, that we are not divided on grounds of religion, color and nationality. Basically we are one, that we belong to the caste of humanity. We should never allow ourselves to be divided. We are all one. This point has got to be made very, very clear. Point three, because I am giving you the form of points, you know. Point three is this. Bhagwan said, Bhagwan said, with gold you can make a ring. The same gold can be melted and you can make it in the form of an earring. The name and the form of the jewels change, but the gold is same. Similarly, we may be different by our nationalities and indifferent for several reasons, but basically we belong to the human race and the human community. This oneness has got to be taught to our students. That's what Bhagwan said. Another point what Bhagwan said was, the spirit of patriotism should be inculcated to students committed to our care. They may be belong to, they may be of any country. Americans should be taught to love America. Germans should be taught to love Germany. You may belong to any country, but you should love your country. You should love your culture. You should be committed to your country. So, spirit of patriotism should be inculcated by teachers. In the minds of the students, whenever an opportunity comes, this is a very, very essential thing. The next point Bhagwan said was, unity is very necessary because all teachers, students, parents, management and administration, all sections have got only one goal, that is dissemination of knowledge, educating our children, children's progress 
children's advancement, their character. So that should be the unifying factor. We should not be divided under any circumstances. That's what Bhagwan said. And then Bhagwan said, "I love you very much. If you start doing your duty, I am ready to give you anything that you want. Anything yeah, you want. I take care of you, your families, your health." Swami will always support you. Remember this point. That's what Bhagwan said. This gives us a kind of conviction and a courage to stand by our own selves with the support of God, because Bhagwan gave that assurance on that day. And some said, Bhagwan, how is your health now? Said nothing had happened to me. I am fine. I am fine. Someone asked, "When do you come to normal walk?" I am walking. I am fine. He says. <laughs> he says nothing had happened to him. He says that he is very fine. And somebody said, "Swami, we want you." And Baba said, "I want you. I want you." These are the things that Bhagwan said to teachers that day. I am also happy to let you know that Bhagwan <coughs> did two important miracles that day. Having come out of the interview room, suddenly he called one boy, and then. He just looked at him. He took the wedding card of his sisters. He said, "Swami, this is the wedding card of my sisters." Okay, he said, and asked the boy to go and sit. The boy went and sat in the tenth row or fifteenth row, which is his uh, seat that day. At the end of the arati, he finds there. In another cover, the Mangala Sutra, the sacred knot, the golden chain, which is given to the bride on the wedding day. The boy was very much thrilled, and he told me, "I am very much excited to hear that. This I have been sharing with as many groups as possible because you must have understood my temperament. I cannot be in peace." Unless I share whatever I know with everybody, yes, that's the greatest delight. I can also share with you another instance. There is one district by name Kamam, K H A M M A M, Kamam. About uh, say 15 hours drive from here. A very small village. Close to this Kamam, by name Chilukur, C H I L U K U R U, Chilukur, a village. Our father went there and started doing some service, and they noticed a temple, Hanuman temple, which was dilapidated, neglected, no priest, no daily worship, nothing whatsoever. Several other people went, cleaned the whole premises, whitewashed the whole temple. There, they kept Baba's picture also. From Bhagwan's picture, vibhuti started flowing continuously. The several other were immensely happy for the kindness of Bhagwan, approving and accepting their services to Hanuman. establishing that he and hanuman are one and the same and bhagwan said one point which i want to uh, bring to your notice to the teachers while just about to leave the interview room he said one thing understand 
that God is in everybody in the form of I. When I say, who are you? I am so and so. I. Everyone says, I, I. This I is divinity in you. This I is common to everybody. Then once you understand this commonness of I in everyone, we stand united. And Bhagavan said to those teachers, you have had a conference for three days on education in human values. Do you think that you are uh, importing values from anywhere? And uh, they did uh, bhajans there in the temple premises. They saw Baba's photo full red in color, face also. Because Hanuman's face is smeared with the red color, as most of us have seen. Vermilion, Hanuman's face. Same thing they noticed on Baba's face. So coming back to this point values, Baba went on asking those teachers, where are the human values? You are learning them? Where are they? Bhagavan said, you are the human being, right? So you are born with human values. A tree is not acquiring the quality of a tree. Animal is not learning the quality of an animal. So also, a human being need not learn those qualities because he is born with the human values. So what we are trying to do in teachers' conference is just to remind ourselves these human values, that's all, which are latent in us, which have been there. So the job of a teacher is to bring out those values which are already present among children. And that's what Bhagavan said. This is the task for which I have come. To remind your value, to remind your divinity, and therefore whosoever does this job will have my bounteous blessings. That's what Swami said. That's thing which I want to share with you that had happened. And now I want to bring your attention to interesting conversation I had with some friends on 7th of February 2004. Yes. I was so happy to talk to them and I informed Swami and he was very happy he heard all that I said and at the end he said, you learn from them, they are far better than you. That's what he said. But I am happy to hear those comments from Bhagwan because it is so nice to be corrected. Bhagwan always says, those who are under the lamp cannot see the light because they are standing under its shade. The lotus flower will be able to attract the honey bees from long distance while the flower is surrounded by frogs, snails that do not know its value. Similarly, those of you who are staying with me, you do not know foreigners coming from long distances. They know my value more than all of you. That's what Bhagavan always tells. It is not simply a compliment to foreigners. It is 100% truth. 100% I know because the places I visited abroad and the people with whom so whosoever I talked to suddenly certifies what Bhagavan said. As I said early, earlier, I don't mind to repeat, no one is a foreigner here in Prashant Nilayam. I said there in Prashant Nilayam, I think you were there. No one is a foreigner. It's a wrong thing to say that. Those who have not come here are foreigners. 
those who have not seen Baba are foreigners. We all belong to him. He is our father. How can you say they are foreigners? I don't accept it. Moreover, the self in you, the spirit in you, the consciousness in you, the Atma in you, is very much the same in everybody. We belong to the kingdom of the spirit, the kingdom of heaven. How who can we be a foreigner in the kingdom of heaven? We are all one. That's what I sincerely believe in it. And it is in this context, a funny thing had happened, that I could meet some devotees from different countries. Somehow I was just passing by in the eve for my evening usual walk. Suddenly they said, Sir Anil Kumar, why don't you spend some time with us? Naturally I went there. I found very few devotees there. Then I told them, if you allow me, I would like to interview each one of you. Would you like to answer my questions? They said, why not? We will happily do it. Mind you, these things I informed Swami. That's why I'm sharing with everybody here. So, the questions I have put to our friends and the answers they have given, I'm sure will be highly profitable to everybody. The first devotee belongs to Brazil. Her name is Fatima. F-A-T-H-I-M-A. She is a an administrator, school administrator. She runs some of the educational institutions there in Brazil. I asked her some questions and she gave wonderful answers. Swami was very happy to hear those answers. First question I have asked her is this. Is this the first time that you have come here? Would you, me, would you let me know your experience, please? She said, yes, this is my first visit. If you ask me to give my one experience is this, then I have his darshan, Bhagwan's darshan. I feel as though I am receiving energy from him. I am very energetic now. I am very enthusiastic after having had her had Bhagwan's darshan. When I said it, Swami was immensely happy. My conclusion to this answer is this. Here I am giving my personal note. My conclusion is, we should also be ready to receive that energy. We should be sensitive. We should be receptive. We should be prepared to receive that energy. Because that lady, a great devotee, was so sensitive, with open mind and heart, could receive Bhagwan's energy. That is really fantastic. Second question was this, I asked her, what is it you desire? What desires you have to place in front of Bhagwan? Given the chance, given the opportunity, what desires you would like to place before Swami? Look at this. Ah, what an answer she said. Truly speaking, Mr. Anil Kumar, I don't desire anything. I don't think that at least there is one in ten thousand who would say that. I have nothing to ask, desireless. And I don't desire even an interview. No. What I desire is this. That I should improve the spirit of love within me and that I should share love with everybody around. That's what I want. Nothing more is required. When I said this to Swami, see, those people don't have desires. You fellows, you are full of desires. 
there is no end at all. See, that is the level of their devotion. Third question. What is it that you are taking from here? Prashantra name, what I mean. What is it that you are taking from here? This being your first visit. Oh, what a wonderful answer she She said, The sweet name of the Lord and His beautiful form, His wonderful teachings and number of books on Sai literature. I am taking these things with me. That's all. I don't want anything else. The next question I put to her is this. Having gone to your uh, place, what do you want to do there? You have been here in Prashantalim quite for some time. You say that you are very well influenced by Bhagavan. What is it you propose to do back at your native place? See that. Mr. Kumar, I am very anxious to take to this process of meditation. I want to spend long time in meditation. I am very much determined to transform myself. I have realized that I need purity of mind. I'll work on myself. I have determined to turn my mind inward so that I'll have the experience of my consciousness or Atma. This I want to do back home at my native place. That is the level of a devotee, I tell you. Really, I was wonderful. I know that each and every one of you also are of that standard, I know that. This is only a, a random sample, I just I mean that's all. You, you are all so great. <laughs> yes. The fifth question. How are you feeling here? We are meeting here now. This is North, uh, north Block, N5, evening time. We are sitting under the tree. Nice meeting you. How do you feel here now? You know, she see, she gave me this answer. Mr. Anil Kumar, I feel I am light. I am unburdened. No more of worries and anxieties. I am very light. I am very happy. My only wish is this spirit of being light in weight without carrying the head load of worries. I want to experience the same thing at my native place. Nothing more. Let me be as light as possible even there also. That's what she said. Sixth question. What are the things that you have observed here? which you want to implement there, which you want to implement there, this is a question I asked. She said, two things I have learned which I want to implement there faithfully. What are they? One, faith in Swami, unwavering faith, steady faith in Swami, and two, love. These two things which I want to implement there. These things I want to share with my colleagues there all over the country. And she said, I want everybody to realize that we, sh that we are all bound by divine energy. We are all united by divine energy. And therefore we should never be divided. Divine energy unites us that we should be conscious of the fact. And this is the true relationship that we are all one and been united by divine energy. This has got to be realized and experienced by everybody. Question 7 Madam, 
after you go home, what is the first noticeable change that could uh, happen in your lifestyle? What is the first noticeable change, change that could happen in your lifestyle after you are back to your native place? That is the question. And she gave this answer. I have one servant maid. She does lots of work, cleaning, cooking, caretaker. She does all work. But all this work till now is mechanical. But after having come to Swami, I have decided to love her, to have some sympathy, to have some kind of forbearance, to have spirit of tolerance for her and cooperate that I should help her more than what I have been till now, that I should also serve her now and then. She has been serving me. I should also serve her. This is what I we do it immediately after going over there. That's what she said. Eighth question. You seem to have understood so many things. You appear to have learnt many things here. We are very happy about it. But let me ask you one plain question. What is the difficult thing that you observed to practice there? Anything which is difficult to practice there. You observed so many things here. You have learned so many things here. Out of this lot, what is it which is very difficult to practice there at your place? This is straight answer. To get, rid, to get rid of my ego. It is the toughest problem. I said, how do you know? She said, I got some opportunity to serve in the Westerners canteen. I was serving. Suddenly we came to know that Swami's car is coming that side. I left my work, came out of the canteen so that I can look at Swami. And Swami can look at me. But he has not turned his face towards me. He has turned his face to the opposite direction. As if I am a non-entity. For the first time I have learned that I should be egoless. That's what she said. And she also confessed that it is the ego that stands between God and herself. And to break this ego is a tough job, she admitted. Question number nine. Look here, uh, I think, I may be wrong, but I think your country is full of people who are worldly, materialistic, do you think that uh, there is over dosage of spirituality in Prashantinalia? Extra dose of uh, spirituality, do you find it? How are you going to balance extra dose of spirituality here, over dosage of materialism there? How do you establish balance? That is the question I put her. This is answer. Look here, Mr. Kumar. I don't think that materialism and spirituality are contradictory. I don't think they are opposite. They are complementary. They go together hand in hand. She gave one example from her life. She has three daughters. She holds a very big position status and quite rich enough with no idea of what service is. Somehow it so happened 
Unfortunately, when she was traveling by car, she met with an accident, and she was hospitalized for six months. And everybody served her, and her three daughters served her most faithfully, affectionately. And she tells me, first time I have realized the value of service, that everyone need to serve because. they need to be served later the need of service the importance of service i have learned here the swachi said and further i am also convinced that if i serve that bhagwan will take care of my family that bhagwan will take care of my children if i serve him lord will take care of everything else the swachi said Therefore, if we move in the world with God in our heart, we don't find anything contradictory in this world. We don't find materialism and spirituality running in opposite directions. They are not opposite polarities. No, they just parallel, running hand in hand together. That's the answer she has given. and uh i could talk to the second person sitting there his name is jawan j o v a n he is a geologist he hails from croatia um uh, a place close to croatia by name serbia s e r b i a and he gave answers and these things also i could share with swami first question brother how many times you visited bhagwan till now he said this is my third visit i feel like visiting this place again and again because i am drawn i am attracted by his magnetic love and i believe that i could visit this place repeatedly because of his grace i pray to him that he would bless me with many more opportunities of being here in future also the second question all right congratulations for having made three successful trips to this place you are really the chosen devotee Undoubtedly, you are quite a lucky one. But uh, I am inquisitive to know what had happened at the end of every visit. How are you benefited by every visit? That is the question I asked. This gentleman said it. Very nice answer. First time when I looked at Bhagwan, I saw my father in him. I felt as though my father is waiting to receive me for long. I uh, I felt that my dream is realized. In fact, when I saw Bhagwan's photo for the first time, tears started rolling unnoticed on my face. I do not know how it had happened. I could not control this. until i made my trip to prashant nilayam that was my experience in my first visit then in the second trip i could have the blessing of being granted with an interview swami gave me interview and i could have seven pada namaskars the gentleman counted also good and i my joy knew no bounds i could have that infinite happiness how can i experience all this and during my second visit i saw baba as my mother all the love concern care everything i experienced experienced and at the end of my third trip i could develop a feeling 
that no anxiety no worry nothing whatsoever would bother me that there is someone to rely someone to depend upon someone to take care of my life that's my experience at the end of the third visit i was so happy then third question well okay there in serbia how did you experience baba at your native place then he said why do you put that question please know that swami appears in my dreams again and again he conveys certain messages to me giving me direction and guidance whenever i wanted he solved many many of my life problems in fact i have no words to thank him for all the guidance for all the direction that he has mercifully given to me till this day and mr anil kumar i remember one statement that baba made to me which is ringing my ears till this day what is that long life is not important divine life is important is not important how long you live is more important how spiritually you live how religiously you live how you practice sadhana during this life span which is more important really grand then i have decided this what that man said i have decided to practice his teachings both in word and deed i want to practice both by word thought and deed that's what i have decided he said swami remains to see that what he was telling see how those people are reacting because of their devotion they are getting such wonderful feelings you fellows you are empty fellows so what can kind of be actually it, it, it happens naturally the fourth question sir if there is no objection would you like to share one of your experiences with us this gentleman said you know once i had to get down there at frankfurt to catch next flight and as you know frankfurt is a very big airport with so many gates and so many flights just going and coming like mosquitoes over here yes but believe me the gate i had to go happened to be number 108 108 this has thrilled me and uh, another time i missed my flight and uh, i could not have my baggage with me i missed my baggage also it took about 2 days and lufthansa airlines people paid me some amount towards uh, the delay they paid in dutch marks 108 again well i was speechless and then i joined a new company and uh, we all have numbers every employee has a number and my number in my company is 108 i don't think all this is a matter of coincidence no it is all bhagwan's will that's what i believe in it that's what he said fifth question sir would you tell me the first change or transformation in you after uh, being here then he said this is a wonderful answer look here mr anil kumar the first thing the first change in me is this small small mistakes in me started appearing as big gigantic 
big mistakes of others started looking very small big mistakes of others are very small now and my own small mistakes started appearing very big this is the first change and i also have learned how to excuse everybody how to pardon everybody and that there is every need that i should transform reform myself these are the changes that's what he said sixth question you look so happy sir i am so happy to see you good if one can't be happy here where else can anyone be happy impossible this is the place of bliss i am so happy you are in a blissful mood i have one small question we don't mind this answer do you feel frustrated and depressed any time do you feel frustrated any time then he said why not why not i am also human being there were many moments of depression and frustration but one point makes me feel very very painful what is that problem what is it that's paining you he said look here anil kumar we take so many resolutions we take so many decisions every year each time and we fail to implement even one i feel so bad for this in spite of so many resolutions and decisions that i am not able to implement even one that is really painful that's what he said and i think this is a sign of mental weakness this point frustrates me this appoints me he said then i met the third gentleman among them his name is dubravka d u b r a v k a he hails from croatia and he is a businessman with vast experience and i asked him these questions needless to say they are all shared with swami the first question is this i asked him sir i don't think that you have come here for the first time just as i look at you i think you are pretty senior devotee you must have come here many times would you please let me know how you have come to know swami would you please tell me then that gentleman started answering me like this yes this is my second trip this is all swami's grace and his will i participate actively in sai centers there in croatia and i heard many of bhagwan's cassettes i heard number of bhagwan's discourses i am familiar with sai literature i saw many bhagwan's video cassettes and as i see as i watch those video cassettes i feel as though i am there transported to prashantanilayam so these things really amazed me these things have drawn my attention quite a lot and bhagwan's service to humanity is unimaginable beyond all dimensions and the spirit of sacrifice attracted me that's what he said second question sir would you please tell me one important personal experience that's what i asked him he said mr sanil kumar i don't know whether you are going to believe me or not but what i am telling you is a fact there in croatia as we sit in bhajan center immediately after one bhajan 
ఐ సీ ఇన్ ఫ్రంట్ ఆఫ్ మీ ప్రశాంతి నిలయం అండ్ బాబా గివింగ్ దర్శన్ టు ఎవ్రీబడి ఐ విజువలైజ్ ఐ పిక్చర్ ఐజ్ హోల్ ఆఫ్ ప్రశాంతి నిలయం at the end of the first bhajan just as you see any film projected on the screen another thing had happened while returning from bhajan i wanted to visit one of my relations and uh, when i decided to go i saw his form right in front of my eye i could see him and next morning i was about to go and visit him what happened when i opened my door i saw my relation at the door step so that i don't need to go there he already came here to see me this all things happened because of bhagwan's grace this is all his will that's what i think and i could narrate you many of my experiences that you cannot believe and in fact i am quite astonished surprised at my own experiences and i tell you my life partner is a muslim and he has no faith in bhagwan he has no idea to visit this country but slowly slowly he to became a devotee and started desiring to visit this place and have bhagwan's darshan this is sai miracle that's what he said then third question when you saw bhagwan for the first time how did you feel how did you feel said somehow i felt nearness not only that when swami looks like that i feel cosmic energy getting into my body i feel i am as strong as an elephant yes i feel very strong now i feel that my intellect is awakened i feel that outburst of my devotion i also feel sense of detachment discrimination within me this is all because of bhagwan's con- compassion and mercy that's what the answer next question how would you like to be after reaching your place after going home how would you like to be being influenced here in prashantinilayam this is interesting answer mr anil kumar you may call anything self evaluation or self assessment or self inquiry you may call anything i want to audit my own life i want to evaluate my own life i want to proceed along with the path of self enquiry that's what i have decided i pray that i should be more kind and more compassionate showing concern for everybody that i want to talk from this day sweetly and softly than ever before and i am just examining what change I, that could be possibly brought within myself having been here that's my first concern and that i should strive hard for spiritual advancement not for worldly gains as all as i see many of our devotees i find among them a change which is temporary which is momentary which is emotional i don't want to such a change i want an everlasting change in me a change that would be there 
permanently so that i would be an evolved soul the swat is said my immediate botheration is this how to be free from this bondage how to attain liberation how to mold my life in accordance to these my ambitions that's my present position that was the answer question number 5 yes what all you said is true everything goes as per bhagwan's will but yet we have got our own plans we have got our own ideas and don't you think that we should also put in our own effort don't you think so for our effort we pray for his grace don't you think so and when would you like to be back to prashantalayam next time that was my question the answer is this mr anand kumar sir i tell you that thought is not arising in my mind at all you are asking me when i am going to visit this place next time that thought doesn't arise in me at all why because i experience the swami there in my country i experience swami there at my residence i experience swami in my heart so the thought of my next trip doesn't arise everywhere i feel divine vibrations more powerful than electro magnetic waves where experience them all to tell you honestly we experience nearness there more than here yeah. that's what he said that's what he said i cannot estimate the divine energy that we receive from swami i cannot say that all our experiences miracles there in our country are strengthening our faith day to day we are more strong in our faith than ever before and would you please tell me where swami is not in existence swami is everywhere whether is croatia or malaysia he is everywhere so he doesn't care at all in fact the gentleman says really i was wonder struck the moment you start singing his glory you will feel him then and there itself that's what he said what more i want then i met the fourth gentleman by name severin yes he v e r i n he hails from slovenia slovenia quite a young man very much reserved while all others have been laughing and enjoying my talk joking this man was quite serious quite uh, re- reflective and uh, meditative and contemplative oh i thought he may not like me to put more questions but when i turned to him when i turned to him he said sir i don't feel like talking much please don't put too many questions my desire is to learn from everybody from the devotees here from this place that saw my only sadhana is to recapitulate to remember again and again the happy moments of my stay here that's all but i said all right but i last few questions not many don't worry the first question what you said the man is quite right you say that you don't feel like talking much swami appreciates swami wants us to work more and talk less swami really appreciates you are really following swami's teachings i can understand it in fact as i look at you i feel that you are practicing swami more than all of us put together i am very happy to note that 
But out of curiosity, I want to know your spiritual experiences briefly, if you don't mind. Then that young man started telling me, Look here, I have been visiting this place for the last ten years. He's quite a young man. Wow, good. There in Slovenia, I saw Bhagwan's video cassette. There in that cassette, we could watch Bhagwan doing Abhisheka, the pouring of Vibhuti on Shirdi idol in those days. I watched it. I also watched Kumkum, Vermilion, Turmeric, Swami materializing, showering on Shirdi idol. That scene has drawn my attention. That has brought me to Bhagawan for the first time. That's what he said. And I developed interest in spirituality. I wanted to know spiritual truths. I read almost all books of Bhagawan. I heard his messages. And I actually participate in Sai Center activities. I necessarily visit Prashant Liam every year. This I have been doing it most religiously for the last ten years. That's what he said. Then, next question. Because that man said I have read Baba's literature, visiting this place for ten years, then I could understand that he is of a different level. Then I want to put another question. Would you please let me know how Swami entered into your life? See the answer, like a bullet he said. I could not open my mouth immediately after listening to that. You know what he said? What, Mr. Kumar? What is your question? You asked me how Swami entered into my life? No! Swami is already there in me. Where is the question of Swami entering into my life? He is already there. It was almost an electric shock to me to hear that answer from him. Hats off to his intellect. May Baba bless him. When Swami is inside and outside, when Swami is everywhere, your question, when Swami entered into my life, is out of question. Because He is everywhere. That's what He said. And then He said, it was war time and we have to shift our family and Swami protected all the members of our family. We are very grateful to Him. We are highly indebted to Him. If we are safe and secure today, it is because of Bhagawan's grace. Because we had to run away from our homes during the war time. That's what He said. In those challenging, testing moments, Swami came to our rescue. I personally feel the Swami is guiding me. He is leading me every day. That's my feeling. That's what that young man said. Third question. Young man, I know, in the beginning itself you said that you are not prepared to answer several of my questions. So this is the last question. Please answer me. What are your future plans? He said, I want to practice and experience all that I have read till now. Point two, I want to know those things and practice to be nearer and closer to Bhagavan. What is it that takes me closer to Him? What is it that makes me feel Him, that concerns me now. I want to develop Sai awareness, Sai consciousness, more and more hereafter. In fact, in Sai Darshan, there are so many advantages. You just think that you have had Darshan this morning, but you do not understand the real depth 
and the significance in Swami's darshan. And I feel that we are not richly benefited by his darshan because of our own faults, deficiencies and mistakes. See that. We should be pure so that we will be hundred percent benefited by his divine darshan. Our own attachment, our own ego, our own possessiveness, heed, hatred, envy, these are all the things that are there in our head. Therefore, we are not totally benefited by Bhagavan's darshan. That's my opinion. And our immediate sadhana is to get rid of them right now. And I already started. I am already on the job. That's what that gentleman said. Finally, I would conclude with a note. This had never happened till now. I came across many people who interviewed me. Many journalists interviewed me. Many radio, TV people interviewed me. I never interviewed anybody. I wonder how I could meet a person from Brazil, Slovenia, Croatia, Serbia, and who were so kind enough to have responded to my questions. I sincerely trust that it is Bhagwan's grace and Bhagwan will that made this possible, which I could share with Swami and which I wanted to share with everybody here. And now, I come to some conclusions. The first conclusion is this. To think that I am greatest devotee, to think that I am a great devotee, is nothing but illusion, is nothing but delusion, a big mistake. And moreover, to hear others' experience is nothing but a great epic. Bhagavata. Bhagavata is a story, full of stories of devotees. When you let me know your experiences, I am privileged to hear Bhagavatam, stories of God. This is my conclusion. And it was Parikshit of Bhagavata who attained liberation by listening to the experiences of devotees through the sage Sukha, S-U-K-A. I understand that life is a long journey, that life is a continuous journey, that life is an eternal journey that we have to advance, advance. I am fully convinced of the fact that Swami may convey His message through anybody here, anyone whom I meet, anybody whom I come across, may have some message to convey to me, which is Swami's inspiration, which is Swami's will. That's what I have come to conclusion. Therefore, the spirit that I achieved something better be given up immediately. That we have got to try to remove all the obstacles along our journey, along our spiritual path. Not even in the dream, let's not consider ourselves superior to anybody, that we are more knowledgeable than anybody. And that ego is our worst enemy. And these are the lessons I have learned after talking to these Sai brethren and sisters. Thank you very much. Can we spend some time more? Okay. On 23rd February 2004, I had been to Anantapur. Bhagavan asked me 
to address youth there studying in Krishna Deva Raya University. There I gave a talk for about one and a half hours or so, directed by Bhagavan. Well, naturally, if you carry the Baba's banner, you will be a successful speaker, a successful singer, you will have good audience, everything Swami will take care of. Naturally, the talk was quite successful and uh, they have put some questions which I want to share with you. After my return from Anantapur, Swami said, Have you not faced the following questions? He went on telling me all the questions put to me. Then he said, What answers have you given? Then I said, Swami, when you know the questions, I know the answers. You know the answers what I have given. Then he said, How do you know? <laughs> Swami, I know these answers because of your discourses. I have gone through your literature. I am sure that I find answers in your discourses. You dealt all the topics under the sun. What is that we run short of? Then he just pinched my cheeks and said, Good, good, he said. So, as these things also have been brought to the divine notice and attention, the questions of which he himself said in a sequential order and endorsed my answers, I am sure that you will also appreciate them and be benefited. Question 1. These are all questions from youngsters, postgraduate students, research scholars. Some are students of computer science, some are students of business management. A dialogue, a sentence made by the Vice Chancellor of the University, of Krishna Devaraya University, Anantapur. What did he say? At the end of the meeting he came and told me, Mr. Anil Kumar, in these 23 years of existence of this university, for the first time, students behaved in a very nice way, in a very disciplined way. Never they listened to the talks peacefully. You will be finding pelting of stones, heckling, Slogans, loud talk, indiscipline. First time, I am so happy to notice silence in the auditorium. Then I said, Sir, shall I tell you the secret? He said, What? We kept on the dais Bhagavan's picture, six feet long picture. He will see to it that nobody can open their mouth. <laughs> Everything is kept under lock and key. That's all. Tomorrow they will be again normal. Therefore they are like that. Sir, when his photo could control the whole audience, can you imagine if he were to be here in physical form, what an impact he would bring in among the youth of this place. I said the same thing to Swami. He was very, very happy. He said, Anil Kumar, have students behaved properly? Have they heard your talk in rapt attention? I said, Swami, everybody heard my talk in rapt attention because the president of the meeting. President? Who presided over the meeting? Is the vice chancellor? No, 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 no. The president of this universe. Bhagavan Sri Satcha Sai Baba pressured the moment. Oh, it's a good answer, he said. <laughs> Swami, I feel that you have locked lips and mouths of everybody and kept the keys here in Prashant Nilayam. Therefore, nobody could open their mouth. Oh, you enjoyed it? Yes, Swami, I felt your presence.
He was so happy. And questions are from the adults, postgraduate students, professors, grown-up people, and research scholars. They are all non-devotees. They are all non-devotees who are exposed to a talk of this kind for the first time. Please note that. These are the questions. First, Mr. Anil Kumar, we see you very happy. What was your, your, the theme of your talk? Oh, good. The theme of my talk, thank you. The theme of my talk is this. University to universality. University to universality. That is the theme of my talk. Of course, Anil Kumar is known for talking, you know. So, wh what I spoke there, we can think of it later. The question should be of some interest to you. This first question, Mr. Anil Kumar, we see you very happy. Please let us know how to be happy. Let us know how to be happy. Like you. I said this. My young man, I can understand you. Instead of asking me how to be happy, please ask yourself, why are you unhappy? <laughs> ask yourself, why are you unhappy? That is the very reason, same reason, holds good in my case to be happy. But I am not going to give you a, a, an escaping answer, no. To be happy, first thing, we should start, stop comparing ourselves with others. Second thing, we should stop competing with others. Three, we should not be egoistic. Point four, we should not be jealous of others. Point five, we should find some time for good humor every day. Point six, we should find some time to make others happy. Point seven, we should be ready to accept anything given to us at any point of time. Not necessarily according to our preferences and choices. Let us have the temperament to consider everything as God's gift. Let us develop this choiceless awareness that will make everybody happy. There was thunderous applause to this answer because it applies to everybody. The second question from a big man. Mr. Anil Kumar, I have that temper in me, temper, anger. I am angry with everybody. It's very easy to lose my balance in my case. I am always an angry man. How not to be angry? Please tell me. Then I said, point one. This is all from Bhavar Bhagavan said it. When you are angry, look at your own self standing in front of the mirror. In front of the mirror, you will see how ugly you are. <laughs> Two, drink one glass of cold water. That will pacify you. Three, come out of the house. Move freely in the open space. Anger will be pacified. Point four, know the root cause for your anger. What is the root cause for your anger? Root cause for your anger is ego. Ego. That you want everybody to follow you. That you want everybody to listen to you. That you think you are right. The other person is always wrong. You think that you are superior to everybody. That others are inferior. You think that you are always correct. That others are wrong. This is ego. Then once this is known, then once you feel that I may be also wrong at times, then once you understand that others also are correct, 
that others are as good as yourself that others are as decent as yourself then there will be no place for ego to exist you will never be angry with anybody when you try to understand the other person step into his shoes you will know what life is the best way to lose anger is to think from the other man's view point of view not from your view point this seems to have been widely appreciated third question sir many people criticize me many people make fun of me this really disturbs me i am a sai devotee they make fun of me how i am a sai devotee and uh, how that in this modern age they have killed it well i lose my balance how to tackle the situation i told him young man easy point 1 what did baba say when you receive a register letter when you don't accept it and reject it the post will go back to the sender similarly when anyone criticizes you if we don't hear if you are not affected it will go back to that fellow who is critical towards you one number two if that fellow criticizes loudly all his, his words will go into the air if he criticizes you silently it will apply to himself don't worry point three if his criticism is correct correct yourself reform yourself if the criticism is false allegation don't bother yourself baba said i will not be irritated if anyone calls me bald headed because i am not bald if anyone says that baba has mop of hair hello of hair i am not insulted because i have a lot of hair so if that what is in you is said you don't have to be disturbed if that is said which is not in you even in that case you don't need to be disturbed that's what baba said yes another question what is meditation how to do it point 1 eating writing walking talking reading everything is meditation according to bhagwan sach sai baba number 2 the true sign true indication the success of a genuine meditation the end result of meditation is this what is it thoughtless state the withdrawal of the mind is the end product is the end result of any meditation point 4 this meditation has to be taken up in three steps the first step is concentration second step contemplation third step meditation <coughs> supposing you want to have rose flower what do you do you go to the garden there are so many plants there jasmines chrysanthemums dahlias so many flowers but you want to have rose flower so what do you do you avoid all the rest of the plants and walk straight to the rose plant that is concentration am i clear please when you stand in front of the rose plant what do you do with the help of the scissor you cut the flower only avoiding leaves avoiding branches avoiding thorns you correct cut the flower only that is contemplation third you collect the flower enjoy its smell 
enjoys beauty and you are lost you forget yourself in watching the flower that is meditation so we think that concentration is meditation wrong we think contemplation is meditation no meditation is the third step that's what i said fifth question sir many people question our experiences what shall we do i said why did you share your experiences with everybody i am not here to share my experience with everybody no unless you are genuinely interested unless you want to know positively why should i share my experience with you i am not supposed to share my experiences with those critics with those people that question me with those people that doubt me because that will damage my life that will weaken my faith that will make me weak spiritually therefore we are not here to share our experiences standing there on the street with everybody no so your mistake is to tell everybody therefore they are questioning you swami will send you a genuine man who needs your support who needs your advice who requires your personal experiences so that he would be enriched so it is your fault then why are you sharing experiences have you questioned yourself is it for publicity is it an ego trick is it for name and fame why do you do that experiences are personal while message is universal share the message with everybody because it is universal be the devotee or non devotee but experiences you can share with the devotees only because individual experience are individual while message is universal then another young man a research scholar has put this question sir so many are dying there in kashmir the whole afghanistan is washed out the whole iraq is bombed there is continuous war between palestine and israel what is baba doing why is he silent then i said baba wants you to correct yourself first you are not peaceful with yourself how do you should peace everywhere you are not happy with your own self how do you find happiness everywhere simple example there is india map on one side father brought that map for his son the son saw the map of india and started playing with it and unfortunately he tore it to pieces father was very much upset scolded his son like anything after some time son brought back the map as it is father was surprised how could you bring this map back he said dad on the other side of the map there is a picture of a man i kept the first piece where the head should be i second kept the two pieces where the hands r i kept the third and fourth pieces where legs are located as i assembled the man map was set right so if you correct yourself the whole world will be corrected so don't worry about iraq and afghanistan first worry about yourself that's what answer i have given another question how to think of god always when i am professionally busy when i am busy with my research how can i think of god throughout because it disturbs my work is it possible baba said one thing 
why do you consider that you are separate from god why do you think that research is your work why do you think business is your work why do you think teaching is your work there is nothing like your personal work everything is god's work when once you begin your day with a word of prayer everything is god's work what are we doing now this is swami's work our friends are recording you are listening and i am speaking this god's work we are making not making any business we are not selfish we are not doing it for any name and fame we want to share with the world of devotees so they will be very happy that's our job this is swami's work this is not our personal work so when once you do your work in the name of swami that becomes god's work that's all nothing like personal work and god's work that's what i said another question from a lady young lady a research scholar sir i have so many negative thoughts what is the remedy now what's the remedy i said you know that your thoughts are negative it is in your hands to turn them into positive thoughts number 2 you are comfortable with your negative thoughts therefore they are coming in sequence all these years when once you understand that negative thoughts are dangerous they would not come to you once again the one you are holding is not a rope if you know it is a snake you drop it immediately you don't play with it is it not similarly when once you know there are negative thoughts which are dangerous you don't entertain them now how to give up negative thoughts by developing positive thoughts negative thoughts can be given up because god is positive so only a positive mind can experience god never a negative mind when you are clicking my photograph if you turn my back if i turn my back can you take my picture impossible i should turn my face towards the lens so that they can take my picture similarly you should turn towards the lens of god that is a positive mind that's what i said then another question from another lady how to give up ego i said tell this sentence oh ego let you go first you say that number 2 you can give up your ego by thinking of god god is greater than you god is mightier than you god is more powerful than you god is omniscient god me god is omnipotent and i am nothing in front of me so when you think of god you will be humble when you think of yourself you will be egoistic when you walk towards the sun the shadow will be behind you when you walk against the sun the shadow will be in front of you similarly walk towards the sun towards god there will be no ego at all you are walking against the sun against god so you are guided by your own shadow the ego that's what i said this is a question this question is from a mischievous young man you say that everyone is god you say that baba is god now tell me how to be baba now i want to be baba how to be baba now i said why do you say how to be you are already baba but you have not known it how to know that simple example you are a post graduate student you are a university student baba is giving free education there in prashanthanalayam 
you give free tuition free tutorials to children in the neighboring villages you are a baba in miniature baba is giving free medicine there you are organizing medical camps here you bring doctors you bring patients you help them you are a mini baba baba loves everybody you start loving everybody you are baba baba is one of sacrifice you learn to sacrifice in your own way you are baba so by cultivating godly qualities you are god being worldly you cannot know that you are god so cultivate baba qualities then you you are baba you are not going to become baba you are already baba that's what i said then another question how to influence others how to influence others i said you don't need to influence anybody you cannot influence anybody because influencing others is a political game influencing others is a matter of business let us not influence anybody if at all you want to influence anybody you should be an example to others in spite of all these problems if you are still smiling if you are still happy if you still maintain balanced state of mind people are influenced by your example not by your words so how to influence others by being the best example by living the principles of sai but not preaching on the principles of sai let us live sai not speak about sai that's what i said then another question sir is it possible for all of us to go to prajantaniyam and stay there we are here in the university how do you expect all of us to come there no how to come to prajantaniyam i said gentlemen prajantaniyam is not there prajantaniyam is your heart a peaceful heart is prachantralayam a blissful heart is prachantralayam a heart of love compassion is prachantralayam it is not a just a geographical place so you don't need to come there wherever you feel peaceful that is prachantralayam wherever you feel blissful that is prachantralayam so don't think of shifting over there that's what i said another man said sir i am a sai devotee and i saw you there number of times i saw you talking to students and happily moving with all of them how are you able to control them and be close to them how is possible you are cheerful and very close to them at the same time how do you control them in the classroom teach them this question is from a professor i said sir very simple when your students know that you love them they will run after you when your students know that you are their well wisher they will be with you when one students know that you are sacrificing your life everything for them they are ready to sacrifice their life when students receive your love they love you in turn because everything is nothing but reaction reflection and resound the last question sir are we in delusion have we pushed ourselves in this delusion our god has thrown us into this delusion has god pushed you into delusion or have i got into delusion myself i said this is only spiritual question i got till now i am glad at least this session is ending with a spiritual question that's what i told them god will never push you 
God will take you away from bondage. He will pull you out, but He will never push you in. Please understand it. In fact, there is no delusion. Delusion is your own imagination. When you stand under a tree, you find the shadow. There is no shadow above the tree. Below the tree there is shadow. Why? The tree has leaves, desires. The tree has branches, attachment. Human life is a tree with branches of attachment and desires of leaves. So, the leaves of desires, branches of attachment of the tree of life are responsible for this illusion, the shadow. Then once you come out of the tree, above the tree, there is only light, no shadow. Similarly, when you look up to God, there is no delusion. When you look down towards the world, under the tree of life, you are in illusion. So, you have gone, God has not pushed you, He will pull you out. When I said these things to Swami, Swami was immensely happy. I told him, Swami, these are all the answers from your divine discourses. He said, I am very, very happy. At the end he asked, where did you have your dinner? <laughs> Swami, I had my dinner there in Sai Center at Anantapur. Did, you, did they serve all the items you wanted? Yes, Swami, they fed me very well. I am very thankful to them. And it is twelve o'clock by the time I return home. And Bhagavan said, it's good at least you return. I thought that you would settle there. <laughs> no, Swami. And he was so happy. Next morning also he was asking me, how is Anantapur trip? <laughs> Swami, excellent by your grace. So I conclude this session with uh, these questions. Thank you very much. May Sai. Mm -hmm.